Welcome to Mobile Armor Radio, the podcast for all things Mecha. Jump ship incoming. Hello everyone and welcome to a new exciting episode of Mobile Armor Radio. We're on episode 15, or as we also like to say, season 2, episode 3. <laughs> I, am, I am the host for your evening, Brian. And I'm Chopper. And I'm Rob. And uh, we got an exciting episode ahead, so I think we're going to go right on into the dropship and what we're working on. Dropship landing. All right, so we're into the dropship now, and that's the segment of the show where we talk about what we're working on currently. And so I'm going to throw it over to Chopper. Oh. What, have you, what have you been working on? <laughs> well, actually, since... Since uh, we're only roughly a rough two weeks out of Gen Con, I have been just right. depressing. <laughs> and I haven't really been working on anything. I did have some plans with Rob at one point that we were going to try and get together on Skype one night and uh, model make, and I was going to try and finish my Nemesis Prime, but that opportunity has ceased to materialize at this point. Uh, yeah, I want to get some of those uh, the uh, seekers from that same line. I want all three of the seekers. Yeah, so uh, needless to say, I have not worked on much. Uh, time has actually been really tight. Uh, I had to do a lot of stuff. Or with the one weekend I did have off, uh, you and Rick had to come down, or not had. <laughs> <All right. laughs> you had to come had down. To do Jeez. And then we uh, we did some filming for Mantic and stuff. And, <laughs> I did take Brian to the Mecca, and uh, yeah, uh, how, how'd you like the uh, the Japanese market? Oh, that was such a cool place. I don't some... know. I don't know if you were overwhelmed or what. <laughs> <laughs> did you get some uh, of that crazy uh, frozen ice cream ball things and uh, some oh, yeah, sushi? Yeah. Mochi. mochi and uh, we had um, oh what what the heck was it like pork pork cutlets? I think for for lunch there. From one of the Japanese places. Yeah, it, it's it's a really cool marketplace, um, and a crazy I, amount of uh, models. And then that uh, DVD store with all the yep. imported DVDs. <laughs> well, he did he did find some stuff he was missing, which I thought was cool. I did, yeah. Did that's, you buy anything? I did not expect. I did. Oh, that's. Good. I got. Uh, but that's a crime star talk. I'll I'll, I'll I'll talk about that. Oh, okay. Time. Yeah. <laughs> we, we uh, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw it to you now, Rob, because I really haven't worked on anything just because of Gen Con and decompressing and other things. So. I don't know if I worked on this, but uh, when I got back from Gen Con, uh, waiting for me, it was uh, my War for Cybertron Jetfire. So I played with him a lot. Does that count as working on something? He's huge. He's beautiful. <laughs> Did you work at transforming him? I've transformed him multiple times. Oh, he has nice. uh, bits to make him more Starfire-ish with uh, more armor and stuff. And But I keep him in Jetfire because I like Jetfire better. And you, uh, he's awesome. You talk with the Leonard Nimoy voice? No, he's not Leonard Nimoy. <laughs> I don't know I don't know who the voice was. I don't think it was anybody in special. In Galvatron? That's, yeah, Leonard Nimoy was Galvatron, right? Yeah. And then uh, Orson Welles. In the movie? Was, yeah, in the movie. Jetfire was only in the cartoon, and then it was only part, only like two episodes because uh, they were going to get sued by Robotech, so <laughs> they had and to change Harmony it to Skyfire. Old. Yeah, they had to change his model completely, so yeah, I do love Jetfire. Jetfire is my favorite because he is just a Robotech Valkyrie, really, so... <laughs> or a Veritech, I guess. I just mixed metaphors there. But uh, he's huge. The, uh, he's a commander class. But Transformers he's... never use no Veritech. That's right. They use the Valkyrie. No. <laughs> they didn't use robo-technology. Uh, but he's, uh, I think he's about a foot and a half tall. He's huge. He's, wow. he, he is now my officially the biggest one. He's bigger than Devastator. So he's my biggest Transformer now. Uh, he's bigger than Metroplex, big actually. Yeah. I didn't realize he's a bigger Devastator. Uh, this version is, yeah. Oh. You, I don't have the big Devastator, like the giant one. I wish I did, but it's expensive. Mm-hmm. Uh, and my Metroplex is a G1 Metroplex, so he's not the the new Metroplex. Is He's quite large. And then, of course, there's the, as of this recording, still almost funded uh, 
uh, uh, Unicron? Uh, Unicron, yes. Unicron is being, he's like, I forget. That thing's almost funded? Oh, wow. Well, it's, it's, it needs 8,000 backers, and I think they're just over almost 5,000 right now, but it's only got like a week left. I don't even know if it's got that long left. Is it a toy or a model? It's a toy. It transforms. And it is, uh, I think it's, it's the largest transformer ever made. I think it's about three feet tall, or quite a bit, over two feet tall at least. And he's huge. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's not quite done yet. That should be in Comstar. Stop talking about it. I also <laughs> did get, uh, from my Gundam loot, I get every month. This time they did something really interesting. Instead of, I usually get the, uh, not standard grade, what are they called? The, the SD? No. High grade? Master yes. grade? No, I high. usually get high grade. No, I don't get high, is it high grade? No. I can't remember. You get high grade. Do I get high grade? This yeah, one was a master grade anyways. Yeah, not perfect grade. High okay. Grade. Yeah. Uh, this one was master grade, but it was a mobile bo- uh, pod ball. And I already had the uh, the smaller pod balls. This one was the master grade one, and he's quite large. And he's only my second MG kit, and he was fun to put together. He's very detailed. And it's funny seeing next to the uh, the regular one because he's, he's huge and a lot more detailed. But I love him. <laughs> the balls are nice. fun. So that's why I've been doing Gundam, my Gundam loot of the of the uh, month. I don't think I have anything else. I I have a lot of uh, mechs to paint, and yet have not painted any of them. So there's that. Brian, have you done anything? <laughs> so I like how Rob is like. I I haven't even I haven't done anything else. That's I've only been doing that, and I'm over here like I'm in a similar boat as as uh, Chopper there. <laughs> Coming <laughs> off of Gen Con, I. I've just been so uh, slammed with uh, work and, and preparation for another event we got coming up uh, here shortly called uh, Michigan Mantic Weekend over in, in Michigan. So a lot of a lot of prepping for a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, so unfortunately, my my giant mecha project has has been put on the side again. <laughs> I swear, I think we're gonna have to get rid of this segment. It's 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 becoming the uh, you guys haven't done anything. Rob, show. Rob tells stuff. <laughs> Rob uh, Rob tells what he did for for Gundam loot, and you guys don't do anything. Yeah, it's. I it's will. Just, I will. I've got to. I have to pivot back to fantasy stuff for a while yet, uh, and then I'll I'll be back on Mecha at some point here. I do because I do have a hankering to get that Nemesis Prime uh, put together. Yeah, he's cool. mm Hmm. So, uh, sadly, yes, uh, most of my stuff will probably be more in the Comstar section than in the dropship, so. Yeah, Comstar, uh, we always have more because of the news and everything, so. Oh, yeah. So, uh, I'd say without further ado, let's roll right into the Comstar. Message from Comstar. All right, welcome to the Comstar. So, this is our section where we talk about pretty much everything else uh, that, that's that been going on for us, whether that be uh, different media Books, movies, television, video games, all a whole nine yards. And boy, do we have uh, a list of stuff we, to talk about. Are we talking about what we picked up at Gen Con too? Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay. We can do Gen Con here. So, if it's mech related. Well, of course. <laughs> and I'm going to bounce it back to Rob. We got lots of news. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, first thing is the Kids Logic are doing the Robotech slash Macros. They, it's actually they have both on there, so it's it's actually both products. Oh, sweet! So it's licensed. I think they're allowed to sell it everywhere but China or everywhere but Japan. They're <laughs> doing miniatures, but these miniatures are forty to seventy millimeters tall, so they're quite tall. And what's, uh, what's that? Oh, so they're they're huge. Not huge, they're pretty... but they're quite tall. They're taller than the average mini. They're about twice the height of an average mini. Well, yeah, the, the smallest is forty. We're talking the size of a of yeah. a, pe- a peacekeeper. Yeah. And uh, they are the first one that just went up for pre pre order is the Valkyrie, and it's all three. It's got the Guardian mode, the Plane mode, and the the Battle Droid mode. Battle Battleoid? How do they? I think it's called. Anyways, Battleoid. <laughs> yeah. Battle-o- uh, they have Walk all- and regular. Yes. Well, it matters what you're talking. You're talking Macross. You're talking, jeez, you're so confusing. Uh, yeah, that just went up for pre-order. Link will be in the show notes. But uh, they also showed off other things they were working on. It's going to be uh, supposedly every month, starting in October, they're going to be shipping these things. And uh, they also supposedly developing a, a game based on different property licenses that they have. So they have Robotech, Macross, Dragon Ball Z, and some other stuff. So it's interesting. This is, this is the stuff that I went in with you on, right? Yes. It's, uh, we got the, one of each of the 
the things. So we'll have to do a review when it comes out. Yeah. My, uh, uh, my new genre, mac- macrotech. Macrotech. <laughs> Macrome. Uh, and macro technology. They, uh, also showed off some new ones they're doing. They have two Zentradi, uh, battle guys and also. Yeah, right. oh. What's that? I saw your post. Yes, and uh, also armored, armored Valkyrie, which is cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has all the missile in the picture. He has all the missiles firing. I hope they model that in. That'd be kind of neat. That'd be sweet. Uh, yeah. So that's exciting. Kids Logic's doing those. Uh, we'll we'll let you know what the quality of them is and how they look and the size scale to everything else. We'll have pictures once they come into our greedy little hands. <laughs> Uh, also for Robotech, there's a Robotech Remix comic is coming out soon, and it's, uh, spinning out of the Robotech regular comic where Dana Sterling came back in time to stop interdimensional Invid, but in this, <laughs> in this new series, she's going back to her own time and everything's changed, so that's kind of fun. So it's well, a way yeah. to examine her, her time, but all fresh and new. So time travel. It's kind of a, a neat way to give, like, a new, something new and fresh to the... Yeah, that's especially it. for the uh, Southern Cross. That's I think the weakest of the Robotech line for sure is that one. So <laughs> change it up really? a bit. Oh, you yeah. didn't like you didn't like the Robotech Masters. No, compared to uh, <laughs> compared to the Mospita <laughs> stuff and the yeah, like that is definitely the weakest of the three. You got you got to admit that. I have you watched it recently? It's not. I haven't. It's so not great. <laughs> I've been thinking in my head. Was it the weakest? It, it is for sure. It's it's very that that cartoon is the Southern Cross cartoon compared to Macross and compared to Mospita is is much worse. Like the the art's not as good, the necks aren't as fun. It's it's definitely a step back. Oh, they do have hover bikes in it, I guess. You got hover motor, motorcycles. So yeah, and if anybody else disagrees, if someone out there thinks that that's the best part of Robotech, please let me know in the in the comments, because I'll fight you. <laughs> Which one? The Robotech Masters? Yes. Uh, also, the Robotech RPG is coming out soon. They posted a uh, just the picture of the cover, and it just said soon, so hopefully that'll be out soon. <laughs> soon. Uh, what else? We got the... Making, making the Robotech RPG again. Who's making it? Yeah. I I don't even know if, what company... Yeah, it was, it was somebody new, because yeah. Palladium lost the license, right? Yeah. I was going to say it's not Palladium. Right? No, no, they, they lost the license. Some new company, I, I can't remember who it is. So it's a new fresh take on it. At very least, it's going to be different. Uh, Battletech Kickstarter wrapped up. It was $2.5 million by the end, which is makes it in the top 100 all-time Kickstarters, which is pretty nice. And I think it's in the top 10 for miniature Kickstarters. Nice. And it's going to be lots of mechs. Far into the future, so <laughs> at least two waves, probably more. I would think. Oh, clans! Wow, not just clans, <laughs> though. Everything they 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 were updating all the uh, old unseen to new art. Good and, and fixing a lot of the uh, fixing a lot of stuff. New RPG for it coming out called Destiny, which is uh, going to replace Mech Warrior. It's called Mech Warrior Destiny, which they must have gotten the rights to use the word the name Mech Warrior back because for a long time the video game people own that. So, so it must. Oh, yeah, have, right. It must. They must have made a deal somewhere in there, or they just said, "Hey, they won't notice. Let's just call it Mech Warrior." <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's fun. BattleTech unit. BattleTech's back on back on the scene. Everybody's excited about that. So I'm sure in the next. I think it's supposed to be. March, it's going to be the new the clan box set coming out, so that Pat will be avoiding it, but everybody else will be excited. <laughs> uh, also, at Gen Con, uh, WizKids announced that they're doing Transformers miniatures. They're unpainted, so they're not like clicks, and they look pretty fun. Um, no, no idea on scale, no idea on what, what are they're they for. Open? Yeah, no, no clicks. idea. It's not clicks, so. I don't know if they're just doing them as just miniatures and not a game attached, or if this is going towards a game. I have a feeling they're only going to be small. I think they're only going to be, like, you know, 28 millimeter size, which sucks. I would wish them to be bigger so that they would scale with, like, G.I. Joe. So you could do 28 millimeter G.I. Joe, or even 10 millimeter G.I. Joe, and make these that size. But we'll have to see when they come out. But that was just announced at, uh, at, the Gen Con. That was one of the few announcements that I was excited about. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, Gundam Battles app is out, the first Gundam mobile game in North America. So if anybody wants to play Gundam fights, it's pretty fun. Uh, has anybody else actually tried it? I have, but I, I would say if you're going to try and play it, make sure you have a plug. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, it eats batteries. It can be a drain on batteries. Oh, yeah. oh, sure. it, it could be. It's not could be. It is 100% down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is, it's definitely a, well, it's, you're, you're actually fighting, like, fighting your gun plus, so. Yeah, yeah. You're, this is not a game you're going to be able to play on a plane. Not unless, a, no. yeah. unless the plane you're on has power. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. I, I do it at work. I mean, I don't do it at work, but <laughs> and I, it, it doesn't drain my battery that fast. But it only I I only play it probably three or four matches. So if you're sitting there for long periods of time, it probably only takes you. Yeah, well, ten I minutes. was in there messing around, making my my Gundam. You know, I got the ugliest looking Gundam on the map. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because yeah, you can pick and choose. You you can either build a one that's actual real, or you can pick and choose and. You can have, make up the craziest Gundams you want. That's kind of funny. Yeah. I, have a Zaku, I have a Zaku head on mine. Yeah. <laughs> it, it reminds me a lot of the, those Gundam Breaker games. Yeah. Uh, PlayStation. Uh, so, yeah. It's, it's definitely a, a really fun feel. I've only played the, the intro, like, tutorial stuff. Yeah. But it's good. Yeah, it's fun. It, you know, it's kind of repetitive after a while, but... It's it's, yeah. it's you're definitely got that anime feel though with that little girl who's supposed to be yeah. helping. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. And all, all and all she answers is is, is, is in giggles and and teeth. <laughs> yes, I like it. <laughs> it's it's definitely got that, that build fighters flavor to it. Uh, so if you like that show, you'll probably like this game. So I think that covers all the news. I don't. Is there anything else anybody else knows of? I think that covers most of it. It covers yeah. most of it. So we can we can circle back to Gen Con stuff at the at the end of the segment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, Chopper, what did what did you have going on in the mex- in the? Uh, uh, oh, again, not too much. Are we so we're gonna circle back to Gen Con then. Yeah. Yeah, we'll circle back to Gen Con because that that'll be a, a segment in and of itself. I have again because of my time constraints. I have not been doing too much as far as that. Uh, we did play Tiny I, Epic uh, Mechs. We did play Tiny Epic Mechs, uh, which was a fun game. Uh, we actually got two thirds of the way done. Yeah, something like that. We had to, we had to, once again, this is back to Gen Con. We had to go to sleep, so we had to <laughs> drive to Gen Con early in the morning, so. Yeah, I mean, there's only so many rounds you play, and I think we got through the first two rounds. Yeah, I think we went through two rounds. We were playing with, uh, Brian Wade and his son Jaden, and it was pretty good. I, I wasn't doing great, but I, I was, yeah, it's fun. I mean the the pro the programming part of it is fun uh, because it's sure once you get bumped from losing combat, then then all of a sudden your old plans go out the window. Yeah, and it, it's uh it is really I like the programming part of it. It's that's really fun because you're trying to avoid people or or when you're ready you want to go fight people and then you're just like trying to move it, but then they move and you're like you start taking over their 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 area so they don't make as many points. Yeah, you're trying to stop them from creating points. It's it's simple, but it it's really fun, and you get to buy different weapons. And you have the real thing of it is you have a little meeple that you can equip, and eventually you get some mm-hmm. mech and stuff like that. But that's that's I don't think any of that's necessary. You could do this game completely with just cards. It would be hard though. I don't know about that. I think it'd be you just need something to represent your mech. I don't, that all adding those little guns and everything to it. That's just. I think that's just for funsies. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant uh, playing the game without getting into your power suit or the mech. No, I mean like just actually the way it's built. The game itself, it's got a bit of a... The meeples are not necessary, but they are fun. It's kind of the gimmick for tiny games, tiny epic games. Uh, I dig it. I think it's uh, a nice part to it. So, uh, uh, tiny epic mech, I'm trying to think of what else we did. Oh, I uh, watched... Uh, because it was free on YouTube for a while. I watched Rise of the Red Comet. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think Gundam that's, the Origin. Yeah, that's. I think that's all I got. There you go. See, yeah, for once, you have more than me. Well, and I also played <laughs> a little bit. And I, you know, I'm back to BattleTech again. Uh, I've worked my way back to the game, the video game. So, uh, uh, I guess the new expansion is coming in December, right? Yes. They're adding more mechs, I think. So everybody's, yeah, I don't think there's much, uh, much 
said about that one so far. Yeah, I've been, so I'm waiting for that. You know, uh, I just finally got the the city expansion put on. Other than the load times when you're trying to load up one of the uh, city boards, it takes forever to load, but it's pretty fun. I like yeah. blowing city build, build buildings up from under people and watching them fall. That's always fun. <laughs> so, uh, but that's all I got. Brian, what have you cool. what have you watched or played or done any of that stuff? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> been like I said earlier, a little busy, but I have uh, picked up a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, that I'm looking to, to check out and get into. Um, I picked up, uh, an anime series recently that I'd seen, uh, only in, in AMV form. Uh, so someone did a, a fan music video, uh, for a show called Yukikaze. And, uh, it's, looks like it's like souped up, uh, fighter jets kind of show. Uh, so it was right up my alley. It's and... the same place right in your top gun, doesn't it? Oh yeah, and uh, I'm pretty I'm pretty stoked to to check the series out. It was made in like 2004. Uh, got looks like a a small uh, like a limited U.S. release through Bandai Entertainment. Uh, so it was had to go on eBay to actually get the discs for it, uh, but lucked out and got them kind of cheap. So uh, definitely excited to check out that one. Um, other things that have been going on. Uh, a lot of a lot of the same stuff we talked about. I checked out that uh, mobile Gundam game. Uh, the Studio Trigger had announced a new uh, series, so that's um, called Promare, I think. That looks like a, a giant mm. mecha show, like a super robot show, uh, kind of in that same vein of Gruen Lagan. Uh, that looked pretty exciting, so I'm, I'm stoked to check that one yeah, out. Yeah, the anime style of that is crazy. The animation. Yeah. From the trailer, it looked really crazy. Like, it was, like, not your average anime. Mm -hmm. My goal is, so, speaking of which, since we're talking about this, uh, what were those books that you showed me? The mobile suit books? Brian? Oh, uh, uh, Thunderbolt? Yes. So, my, my, my plan was to go this weekend and pick some of those up. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I have not checked out Gundam Thunderbolt yet, but uh, I'm I'm definitely excited to uh, to to get into more more stuff. Is uh, that I need, a, to, need to get back into it? Was that a manga? It's uh, there's a manga for it out right now, and then it does have an anime, uh, like an OV. I think it's an OVA series. I think it's like a short one mm. um, that they did a couple episodes of. Uh, I don't think it's terribly long. It, it's a it's set in the Universal Century. Uh, so kind of the the main Gundam timeline, yeah, uh, and, and has you know Zeon versus Earth Federation forces, uh, to my knowledge. Um, I forget if it's like in between Zeta. I think it's in between Zeta and uh, you know 0079. So somewhere in there, uh, I did have a Zeon. watch order somewhere <laughs> saved, but I don't know where I saved it. But yeah. <laughs> I had a, a order of watching all the Gundams because I started at the beginning. Oh, <laughs> but I can't remember where I see yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, that and and checking out that um, that Japanese market uh, since now is a segment uh, was really cool. Uh, there's a lot of great, uh, yeah, different different uh, mecha kits there for for Gundam and I. If I recall, I think I saw some Code Geass stuff. Uh, so it had, it had a, quite a variety and different grade levels too. So there's high grade, master grade. You know, they had, I think they had a couple of perfect grades. Yeah, yeah, they had quite a few and perfect real grades. Grade. So they had some big stuff and a, and a huge collection of manga, uh, both the Japanese only and, and English, uh, ones. So that was, that was pretty sweet. That was a nice little treat, uh, to top off our trip. Well, we had to pick up a bunch of stuff uh, from Pat. And uh, I did manage to find a couple of... There was a, a DVD shop down the corner, and uh, I managed to find a couple of shows that uh, don't really get a, a U.S. release. I, I picked up a, a DVD of one of the Macross Delta uh, movies, so I'm pretty pretty stoked to check that one out. I, I have not yet because I've been so busy. 
um, along with a couple of that are, are not mecha related. But uh, yeah, that was that was a really fun time. And uh, yeah, I think with that we can we can go in and talk about Gen Con because that was that was a huge part of August uh, for all of us. I'd say. Yep, for sure. Yeah. And Pat, did you want to take that out and start with it? Yeah, so, you know, we went and checked out some GKR, and there was not not a lot of too new stuff for GKR, so I didn't mess around with that. But I did make a a lot of trades with the Pirate 2 Press guys, and I picked up a lot of uh, Monster Apocalypse stuff. I got uh, the Mecha King Kong guy, didn't it? Was he a Mecha? Uh, no, he was regular, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. I, got the, I know I got the regular King Kong. Oh, the I got Mech- the Mecha Godzilla. Godzilla guy. Yeah, he's awesome. Yeah. Oh, cool. Along with my uh, protectors, giant robot starter set. Uh, so uh, we, the Pirate Two Press guys are always good guys to trade with. So I got a lot of good stuff for uh, the King Kong guy and the Mecha Godzilla guy. So I got their actual monster figs plus all the support fighters slash monsters that go with them. So that was pretty cool. Uh, trying to think of all the mech stuff that I picked up. This year uh, wasn't as much as last year. Last year we got a lot of mech stuff. Yeah, but the thing was, I didn't go to the Ironwood store and go crazy. No, I got you. I traded for you some of the. Uh, you got a lot of the BattleTech uh, old miniatures, the actual yeah. soldiers, which is fun. They redid those as a special for the con. Yeah, so I thought that was cool. So I got uh, some uh, BattleTech troops now. Uh, that need to be put together, add to the pile. <laughs> <laughs> the ever growing pile. Yeah. Yeah, you picked up Shadowrun stuff, but I don't think you got anything from Catalyst. Battletech related. No, I didn't pick any Battletech stuff up, uh, because I knew the Kickstarter was coming, and then, uh, yeah. I was gonna just give you some cash to get me some Innisfear stuff, because, bleh, clans. <laughs> <laughs> That uh, that cyberpunk uh, twenty seventy seven or the the RPG that they had there, I know that kept selling out. Yeah, I got that. That was the uh, crazy. We Cyber- got that. Bro, we got that day two or day one. Day one. I went there. Probably first day thing. one. Yeah, <laughs> it's a cyberpunk red. It's called. It's it's bridges yeah. between cyberpunk twenty twenty and the video game twenty seventy seven. So it's kind of fun. Yeah, yeah. So I got yeah that box set. It was it's not even shrink wrapped or anything. It just they just <laughs> had like a certain amount on the shelf. And it came with custom dice and stuff, like like Shadowrun dice. I mean, not Shadowrun, Cyberpunk dice. So it was kind of fun. That's pretty cool. Uh, so I guess my big mechs were the Monster Apocalypse stuff that we got. And a bunch of us traded for that stuff, too. Like uh, even uh, Jack Johnson picked some stuff up, too. So You'll be getting to play some of that? Yeah, which would be cool. So uh, uh, some of those are going to bump the list from the list here, so. Nice. Cool. Uh, Rob, was there any, any other thing that you wanted to add? Oh, yeah. I got uh, lots of stuff for Gen Con. <laughs> <laughs> I did go to Ironwind Metals, and I I did get the uh, – the, every year they do a box set, and uh, I got the uh, – it was Jade Falcon this year, which is fun. That's right. That's why I didn't want it, because it was clam. Yeah. And uh, the Catalyst booth was cool. I, I think I picked up something from them. I can't remember what it was, but... Oh, we picked up a bunch of Battletech tech manuals. Yeah, I think that's something like that. Yeah, one of those things. I got so much that I don't remember. Uh, they were showing off oh, those. Because <laughs> that's the one Battletech thing I did pick up was the tech manual. Yeah, that's right, tech manual, yeah, to make mechs. Uh, they did... Sh- they, Catalyst did have, like, a cool uh, uh, displays. They they showing off the stuff that's coming out soon, which we already talked about, Mech Warrior Destiny, the role-playing game. Uh, there's a new book called Ilcon, Il, Il Clan, I should say. It's the, uh, the expansion to the clans into the, further along into the, uh, story. And there's new, two new technical operations book. You get advanced units and equipment and advanced rules coming out, which, uh, they were offered in the Kickstarter, so I'll probably be picking those up in the Kickstarter. But they also had, like, the history of Battletech. They had all the different, uh, Box sets from from the ages. They had battle droids. They had all the all the uh, box sets up until current. They showed off a lot yeah, of the old. I thought it was cool. They had all the old fast boxes. Yep, they had all the old fast boxes. They had all the old books, like uh, showing off some of the original comics and stuff like that. And they went through all the different ages, all the video games, which was fun. 
and uh, even model kits and uh, like some of the old model kits. Like uh, who was it? Uh, what was that cartoon that was? Uh, they used the BattleTech uh, stuff. I can't remember which cartoon it was in the states, and it was just for some reason they they were. Oh, able- that's right. In the in the eighties, they had a BattleTech cartoon. Yeah. So they yeah, had- I, I, I was on the same scope that GI Joe or Mask or. Uh- I had not heard of that. <laughs> yeah, so they had they had a lot of extra stuff. YouTube. You can see them on YouTube, but it's oh, made by the same people who made Mask and all that. It's not good. That's unfortunate. <laughs> No, it wasn't. Because the, they didn't show a lot of. There were some battle techs, but it was mostly the pilots. And but all those pictures of that stuff is all in the our uh, mobile armor radio uh, Facebook group. Uh, who else? Oh, uh, cool Man or not was showing off a Gundam game, but yeah, it, and we're like, oh, that's weird because it was all like just chits and stuff. But I guess it's the it's the Japanese game that they uh, they brought over. And in Japan, there's miniatures aren't such a big thing, so that's why it doesn't have any miniatures involved with it. So that Gundam it's game kind of like is little little standees. Not even it's yeah, I guess it does have some standees, but it was mostly like just a lot of paperwork. It didn't look fun at all, but that's because yeah. it was the Japanese version, so they're just importing it. So I I snapped a picture of it right, and I'm oh, looking at it right now, and it's like it's big. all in Japanese and everything. Yeah. So yeah, hopefully we get a real miniatures game because that's not much of a a fun time. They also had a different, uh, different, uh, mech game. It was kind of like feudal mechs fighting things. I don't even know what game that was, but they had a, a giant uh, mech there, which is fun. Dragon Gaius. Yeah. Uh, Dragon G-Y-A-S, looks like. Yeah. So I took a picture of that too. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. And, uh, always at Catalyst, uh, they had their giant, uh, mech too. I think that was in the events hall this time. So mm. it's always good to see all the, uh, the cool displays they have going. Uh, yeah. Other than that, I, I don't think I got anything else. I did pick up uh, critical mass. Uh, one of them I traded for that, but I don't think there was any other mech stuff I got. It was, uh, that was pretty much it. It was, uh, not as much as last year. I found last year, there was a lot of extra mech stuff. I almost got the, uh, Robotech game. What is the, what's the one you have, uh, Pat? The attack on the SDF one. Yeah. The big one. They had really good deals going, and I just didn't pull the trigger. It was like a hundred bucks. You got that, and oh, uh, that's right. And the standees and something else. Yeah. For for it was a good. There deal. was like another card game or something. Well, I have a pilot I, card game. Yeah, I have all the card games. Yeah, because I bought the acrylic standees to replace the cardboard ones. Right. Yeah, yeah that's right. I have uh, which the, which look cool. Like yeah, they're kind of cool. They were like the flat. But acrylic, and they had all mm-hmm. the all the people on them. I do have all the card games. Uh, they just actually that was part of the news that the the first one was Force of Arms, second one's Crisis Point, the third one is Invin Invasion. That just went up for pre order. So, mm-hmm. and it came that one has as actually has miniatures in it too, which is kind of fun, or at least a miniature. I think it's got a Cyclone miniature that comes with it. So, uh, those card games from uh, what company is that? I can't even remember. Some company uh, yeah, makes them. My head. Yeah, little card games. They're fun. Uh, yeah. I don't know. That was about it for Gen Con for mech kind of stuff. But it was uh, it was draining, but always fun. <laughs> and, and Brian, you even got to come this year. Yeah, I was there this year. I did uh, helped out with the the Mantic booth and uh, ran some events for them. Um, that that took up a good chunk of time, but I I got to stop by and and play a lot of Star Saga. That was fun. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and um, I, I didn't uh, didn't walk away with a whole lot of mecha stuff, but it was really fun to walk around and check out all the the, the big booths. Like it was, it's the easily the biggest convention I've been to uh, ever. And um, so, like, you just spend hours in that vendor hall, and you still miss a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, it is uh, it is gigantic. If if you've never been to Gen Con, you don't understand the scale of it. They, they said there was 70,000 unique people went through that place that weekend, so it's that's pretty good. <laughs> that is a small city. Or a big city. <laughs> it is a city. <laughs> it's a good but, uh, There's a yeah. lot. Gen Con, Gen Con is, was definitely a, a fun time, so I can see myself helping out again next year. <laughs> <laughs> good. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Pat can use the help. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, with that, I think uh, we'll wrap up Comstar and, and head into the Mech Bay Hainer and our main topic for this month. Now entering the Mech Bay Hainer. All right. So welcome back to the Mech Bay Hainer. So the the main topic for uh, this month, uh, we decided to talk a little bit about kind of side stories. Uh, so uh, in in across cross media, just kind of. Uh, you know, offshoots of of a main series, whether it be little short side segments or, or full on series that that branch off in a completely different direction, and uh, just kind of wanted to open up where we'll be doing about two a piece, and I think we'll just kind of go around real quick, each one doing one, and I think we'll we'll kind of take it from there. So uh, I'm gonna throw it to Chopper. Oh, <laughs> he hates going first. I've been I've been all today. I've been trying. To. <laughs> so I went a little different. Uh, we were talking spinoffs, uh, and I want—I was really looking hard for something that wasn't Gundam because mm. let's be honest, Gundam has a ton of spinoffs. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to go with my non-Gundam choice first, and okay. I'm going to call it Aerotech because oh. Battle was roughly nice. into my first uh, delve into mechs, other than watching the Gundam anime, uh, shortly after Battletech came out, uh, they put out Aerotech, which is uh, based in the Battletech universe, but it simulates uh, aerospace fighters and it includes troop-carrying drop ships, interstellar drop ships and warships and everything. So uh, That's pretty cool. Yeah, it was zero. you could do battle space, uh, spaces and battles. You can do... Uh, uh, aircraft battles with your uh, Battletech games, so uh, uh, I enjoyed it. I mean, there was, uh, I mean, the the big thing about Aerotech is that uh, there was a it was a, a huge imbalance with the with the, <laughs> with the rule sets too. So uh, those things were fixed in uh, the third edition, which is Aero, what they call Aerotech two, uh, <laughs> and it didn't slowly. I mean. Don't get me wrong. I enjoyed Aerotech. I love it. I uh, since rebought it again on eBay, mm. so I have it again. Um, but it was good. So I'm, I'm hopefully Catalyst will pick it up again and reintroduce Aerotech oh. into the Tech Universe. That's something I wish Ironwind Metals actually did is put those those miniatures back out because they're yeah, impossible to find. Those would be yeah. great. I think they do a uh, few, but not many. Like. Uh, at least I, I don't think I've seen them at the booth. That I've yeah, you seen. can find it. you can find the the technical readout out of print technical readout books by FASA. You can find the Aerotech space, the you know all the fighters, and uh, I think it's in 2750 and thirty twenty five. Maybe there's even more in thirty twenty six if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, I I, I I have Aerotech too. Drop ships and jump ships too, so that yeah, has a whole lot of difference too. So. Uh, you could even do include it into a map campaign with the jump ships, kind of almost kind of like how BattleTech the video game is now. Well, they have uh, nice. they have Battle Space Two box set, which gives you all the space combat stuff. So yeah, well, Battle Space is basically the second edition of Aerotech. Yeah, it's uh, there's a lot of good stuff there for sure. I'd, I've never even thought about that as a spinoff, but that's that's a really good choice. Yeah, yeah. awesome. But I do so, wish those miniatures were out again because they're they're so expensive. Yeah, so uh, that would be my first spinoff. Nice. All right, Rob, what do you got? Uh, my first one. My first first spinoff uh, is actually it was funny though. It's for me it wasn't a spinoff because I it was introduced me to the uh, whole genre was uh, Gundam Wing. In 1995, mm-hmm. it came out in Japan, but it came out in uh, North America in 2000. That's probably when I first saw it. It, uh, that was the first thing that introduced me to Gundam. Like, I never, before, I, I never really was exposed to it. I, I liked a lot of anime before that, but not, uh, other than Robotech, I really never watched any Big Stompy Robot uh, anime. So that was a whole new thing to me. And, uh, yeah, it was, it's, it was, a uh, Wayne's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, and it was the second, the first, like, the first one that, uh, spun off into a totally different, uh, continuity than, then the Universal Century was G, I think, and then then Wing was the G se- Gundam. Yeah, yeah. It was the second one, just to have a totally different continuity. It had nothing to do with Gundam, really, other than yes. the, the mechs look like them. 
Yeah, no, no, uh, no Zeons. There was, it still had, uh, space colonies and stuff. It was, it was, it was a strange yep. thing to do that they, it was pretty much the same thing, but they just kind of restarted it. <laughs> Cause it was like, they were made of Gundanium alloys. Yes. Yeah. Why yeah. they were Gundams. And it was the Oz, uh, yeah, were the bad federation? guys. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if they were a federation even. But they, uh. Principality. Yeah, no, that's Oz. <laughs> And it was just a bunch of, uh, random kids, kind of. They got, they all had their own Gundams, and they, they obviously fought each other at first, but then they realized Oz was the real bad guys, and they teamed up. And it really introduced Gundam to the West. Like, before that, other than people that were, you know, getting stuff from Japan, that was the thing that really blew it up in North America, so. Oh, I, yeah. I had a big Gundam poster on my wall, and Gundam wing, so it was, it was, that really blew my mind back in the day. <laughs> oh yeah, it, it was it was a fun show, and then like you have like the endless waltz um, movie that kind of capped the the end of that series, uh, like has has arguably some of the most iconic Gundams mm-hmm. uh, that you see. I mean the the Wing Zero with the the angel wings yeah. and the the twin Buster cannons, like that's. When people think of Gundam, that's definitely one that pops in their head. Also, heavy arms and tall geese, yeah. and there's a lot of famous Gundams that were from Gundam Wing that that are just because they all, they were all very different looking. It wasn't like just iterations on a regular Gundam. They all had mm-hmm. their own special specialty kind of, which was fun. And yeah, that that's my uh, spin off. What about you, Brian? What's your first spin off? Okay, well. Uh... The first one that I want to talk about again, kind of trying to, I knew I knew Gunna was going to take a, a chunk of these since there is a lot, uh, so I, I decided to do another one uh, as well called uh, Macross Plus, <laughs> uh, and I think I, I mentioned it a couple of times on the show previously, uh, but I thought it was it was one I really wanted to to highlight. Um, it was basically when when Macross. Had, had kind of finished as a series, they were like, okay, we, you know, we want a, a sequel, um, to it, a follow up. There was Macross 2, which was kind of a failure. <laughs> uh, so. Say, uh, that, but say uh, so. Macross went a little crazy. Yep. Macross 2. I'll tell you about that. That's a tale for a different day. Um, but, uh, so Sh- Shoji Kawamori, the original creator of, of Macross, came back and he's like, I'm I'm going to show you guys how to make a sequel. And uh what what pretty much came of that is this uh this great little uh either four episode series or a uh let's see how long is this? 115 minute movie uh version where uh you basically get Top Gun in the Macross universe. So there's there's a Centrati pilot <laughs> who's who gets to be Iceman basically and uh Usamu Dyson is our our stand in for Maverick uh but they they're basically uh doing test flights on some new experimental uh mechs that will then take the place of uh the the main Valkyrie or uh unit and so you get the YF19 which is an amazing looking jet uh, that's got the inverted wings, so they point out. And then uh, you've got the YF-21, if I remember that correctly, which is a one that's, like, psychically linked to the pilot. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, and so and so that was kind of, like, one of the big uh, dichotomies there. And, um, and later on, they're both kind of pitted against uh, drones, like ar- artificial intelligent drones. Uh, so it, it's a great like uh, dichotomy of of space fighting and and uh, aircraft battles and giant mecha fights, uh, as well as uh, you know because it's Macross, a whole bunch of great music uh, from Yoko Kano, uh, who's done Cowboy Bebop, uh, Escaflone, you know, she's she's done all sorts of great music. Uh, and this is this is no no slouch on that end. Uh, so it's it's also got some great drama, as well as it's it's a, a tale a mature story about immature people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Because there's been, it's Macross. There's got to be a love triangle, right? Has Ben May in there? Uh, no. This is, is post not. that, isn't it? Yeah. So it, it's it's after the main Macross series. So if you're if you remember from Robotech, it's after the SDF one is is landed on Earth. It's sitting there, and they've started sending out ships like the Mega Road uh, to go start exploring space. And so the the finale of it does take place back on Earth, uh, where uh, we the basically on the SDF one, which turns out they left all those guns loaded. <laughs> <laughs> so As you do, you I, know. I won't spoil too much of that, but uh, I will say it is it is a show. I think it's 1994. This one came out. It's gorgeous. It's all hand, like, predominantly hand drawn, uh, like air dog fights. So it just looks amazing. And, uh, and on top of that, like, it's, it's a good warning about the dangers of vocaloids and artificial intelligent singing robots. <laughs> so that's, that's where I'll leave Macross Plus. Uh, if you, you can check out the, the movie edition, which I believe is only in Japanese. Um, but the, if you get the four episode, uh, like series version, you can actually get Brian Cranston as, as one of the characters. <laughs> he, he voices our Maverick. <laughs> I must say there is far too much singing in all the macros. I'll stand right there and say that. <laughs> it's good music though. It's like nineties industrial in that one. But, um, yeah, so that's, that's macros plus. And uh, so I'm going to pass it. We'll just kind of keep going around. So, Chopper, what do you got up next? All right. So my second one, because it's so hard to find some good spinoffs. <laughs> and I just recently watched it. I went back to uh, Gundam Origins, The Rise of the Red Comet. Mm-hmm. And by far, I think it's the best of the origin stories because, you know, Char is the main hero <laughs> of the movie. Oh, the whole uh, story, yeah. really? Yeah, really. <laughs> really, yeah. In in Mobile Suit Gundam, he's really the true hero. <laughs> From a certain point of view. <laughs> he does kill the most zombies. He does. He kills most zombies and most most of the Xeon people. <laughs> yeah. And he, he kills one of the main villains. Doesn't he kill Mugube? Uh, uh, it's an inaction, I think. Good. Isn't it inaction? He just decides not to help. <laughs> well, that's Garma. Garma, he basically sets up to die, and then he kills Cassilia by shooting her with a rocket launcher to the face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Char. <laughs> so, the Red Comet, you know, it, it starts its year one of that whole Gundam series. Uh, what I like about it is just the whole battle scenes. You know, you get to see how... Char gets his nickname, the Red Comet, with the battle alone. You know, you know, you can see him dancing around. You can see how former the mobile suits are, and then how talented the Zeon uh, the Zaku warriors are, keeping up with them and everything. Um, it's a really good space battle in that sense too. And then uh, at the end, though, but what what I even like even more about the Red Comet is that after the first battle, then you, you Char gets his double promotion. Then you start to see the Machiavellian minds of the the Zabi family. You know mm-hmm. how Garma is jealous and wants to be doesn't want wants to be better than Char, even though he's a pretty good pilot himself. You know, uh, Dozo he's probably you know he's the the simpleton, so he's the he's just I'm going to do what everyone else tells me to do. And <laughs> uh, Degwin is trying to end the war peacefully. While his brother Giran is wants the war to continue, Omar in the, almost in like a Hitler-esque kind of way, and then you got what's his face, the sister, what's the sister's name, like Cecilia, Cecilia. Yeah. and she's just backstabbing everyone she can, you know, just to backstab everyone. <laughs> yeah, well, Degwin's the dad of all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then uh, that's it. Yeah, that's the four kids. And then then you got Mukuve, who's just uh, just wants to take over Earth. He doesn't care about anything else. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's the best part about that too. So then you can see why Char hates the whole Zabi family in that sense, you know. Mm-hmm. I guess the only one that's got any sense of sense is is uh, 
what's his damn name again now? Gar, 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 Garma. Garma. <laughs> you know, he's the only somewhat friendly the kid. <laughs> to Char, yeah. You know, but then Char's are like, you're his I'm going to kill you anyways. Just because, even though I like you. <laughs> well, he's got, he's got a list. He's got a, yeah. you know, he sticks to his plan. Mm-hmm. So, but, uh, but the space battles are spectacular through the Red Comet. Uh, and it's a, and it's a good story. So then you get to really start to see, uh, while in Mobile Suit Gundam, you really start to feel for Char, uh, uh, with the rise of the comet, you, you understand his motivations then. If that's mm-hmm. something, you know? Yeah, when you're watching the original Gundam, you just think he's just a jerk, but he's got a reason for why he's doing all that. Which is good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Cool. Fun times. All right, Rob, what do you got next? Well, mine's a uh, spin-off of a movie franchise. The movie franchise was horrible, but the spin-off was pretty damn good, and that is Bumblebee. Uh, <laughs> spun off of the Michael Bay Transformers, and uh, it was so good that uh, it was a spin-off, and then they just said, screw it, it's a reboot now. <laughs> nice. And... Uh, it was finally you get to see the real Transformers in the look and the feel. The the scenes on Cybertron with Optimus Prime actually fighting people and looking like Optimus Prime was sweet. And everybody yeah. he, he saw sound wave and everybody it was so it was so good. And then Shock was there too, wasn't he? I, I don't remember. There were so many people in that those early ones. I watched it on a plane, so my memory of it's kinda of sketchy. Yeah, I've only seen it once so far, but uh yeah, there was a lot of fun stuff going on there. And I just know I'm happy with John Cena. Uh, John Cena, yeah. Well, he was, uh, he was over the top, but he was campy, but he fit, I, he fit the 80s feel of the movie. It was very 80s feeling. So he's, he's, I'm not a huge John Cena fan in a sense, but I know he could act better than that he was doing in Bumblebee. Yeah. Even if he's trying to be over the top. I he think, I loved it. Uh, I loved the 80s feel of it. And then, uh, the, it starred, uh, Haley, uh, Steinfield, and she was, she was a teen character, but she was likable without being annoying, which is hard to do nowadays. <laughs> yeah, I mean, considering that it, that character was supposed to be a guy, I think she did a really good job. Yeah, it was great. It was great. And, uh, it was directed. I'm not saying that the girl couldn't do a good job. I'm just saying that. No, in, I, the kind of, what you were used to seeing as a guy. Yeah, we and, saw, it, like, the attitude. Very similar character in Shia LaBeouf, who was annoying as hell, so it's... it's yeah, a, exactly. Uh, it was directed by Travis Knight, who's known for animation, which I think that helped. Like, he, he directed Paranorman in a lot of animated movies. And oh, it was nice. uh, written by uh, Christina Hodson, who is a brand new writer. She's she's pretty young, and I think she brought a fresh new look to it all. And Michael Bay didn't have his hands anywhere on this, so I think that's what the real success came from. <laughs> <laughs> but I really loved it. I, I, it was a good story, and I did enjoy it much more than I yeah the original Transformers. Movie. It was just the really it was just the concepts of it, like the the actual what the Transformers looked like. The those other Transformers movies, it is just a mess. In this, you could tell what was happening. That that fight scene early on with Blitzwing, I think it is, where he gets his voice box ripped out. Oh yeah, uh, that was a good fight scene. And Bumblebee scanning different vehicles at the beginning before he ended up as the bug, which was kind of fun. So he even had a look different look because his front was I think he scanned a jeep or something, so he had like a more jeep front to him, and I, all that kind of stuff until he. Unfortunately, at the end they turn him into the what is it a Camaro or whatever it is for the Michael Bay movies. They should have kept him as the bug. Oh yeah, because the seventies Camaro. Yeah, they were trying to tie it into the movies, so it's the the transform the Bay movies. So hopefully they just throw that out and it's just him running around as a bug and uh, Optimus and everybody else. I, I do hope the sequel does uh, keep up with this, and it does keep away from just the explosions and metal just smashing into each other that the uh, Michael Bay movies is. They were they were horrible, and this was good. So that's my spinoff was Bumblebee, which is not a spinoff actually anymore. It is now a reboot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, that's you know that's a sign of a good spinoff though. Is like if it can really stand on its own two legs, yeah, and be be its own property. I mean, it's really cool for. For kids these days growing up with Transformers is that they, they recognize the Michael Bay design stuff now. And they, but now they've got like good movies to support that. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I appreciate that. I think it's cool. Cool. And what's yes. your last one, Brian? Well, uh, mine is, is kind of a, an odd, an odd one. 
Uh, From you? It is a, it no. is a Gundam <laughs> spinoff. It is a Gundam spinoff. Okay. Uh, it's the, it's this one called it's a, a manga series called The Return of Johnny Ryden. And if you're if you're unfamiliar, so yeah, I've never like, heard of this. The it's part of the mobile suit variant line uh, that they would do for the model kits, where they would basically create characters much like Star Wars would, and uh, and they'd have some kind of special uh, you know model kit made for them. Uh, so Johnny Ryden's was a Zaku two uh, that was red and black, and uh, it's it's no like the the inner torso is black, and then um, so it's it's very similar to to Char's, uh, which uh, is is always kind of a, a a funny joke is that everyone thinks that he's Char that he's the red comet. <laughs> But but he's actually he's the Red Blitz or Crimson Lightning uh, <laughs> is is his name. So basically, it's just this random character they created for the model kits uh, to be basically an ace pilot uh, that worked for uh, I believe it was the Chimera Corps under Cassilia, and so she was basically an ace that um, or he was an ace that worked for her. And managed to survive the events of Obaoku, but he was there in the Gelgu. Um, and you'll actually see, like, his, his mech designs do show up in, like, a lot of the Gundam Breaker games and stuff like that. Uh, it'll show up as a variant design, uh, which is really, I always kind of thought that was neat. Just kind of like this random dude, uh, with a cool name. <laughs> and, and then I found out that they made a manga series about it. And it's it takes place after the events of the One Year War, uh, where our, our plucky hero Johnny Ryden—I forget the name he goes by—in uh, this, but basically he's got like amnesia, and from from some war injury, and uh, and is working on uh, is basically the Earth Federation leading up to. Uh, the the events of Zeta, where they're taking all the old Zeon suits and trying them out and finding out how they work and stuff. So he's like a test pilot for all of that. Uh, so it's it's this little little manga series. I don't think it was ever released stateside. It went it started in 2010, went for about 18 volumes, and I think it's technically still going, but I don't I don't think there's been an entry for quite a while. Um, but yeah, so it's just kind of like one of those like really random spin-off short stories uh of a character and I admittedly I didn't even finish it cuz it was it was something that I was like still coming out while I was following it. But it was one that always stuck with me is like, "Oh, it's Johnny Ryden." Uh, <laughs> I love Johnny Ryden. He's just this blonde-haired guy that's like got a, a cocky attitude about him. He, he's he's like he's, the Zeon version of Slagger. That's Johnny Ryden. <laughs> it's Johnny Ryden, and uh, so yeah, he's he's kind of the butt of a bunch of in jokes uh, too, with with some of the other kind of named MSV characters like um, Shin Matsunaga, uh, who's got I think he's got the he's the guy with the white goof. I think it's Shin Matsunaga. But uh, yeah, it's basically like all this little like side material they created for these these characters, pretty much is essentially to sell more model kits. Uh, but uh, yeah, I was I was always fascinated by that that kind of stuff. Yeah, that it that it came out of a model kit to become a whole manga series. It's, that's really cool. That's yeah, cool. that's so. that's really neat. I've got a, a couple others, but I'm gonna I'm gonna cap it there because I know we've had a bit of a longer episode. Yeah, uh, you can quickly so. mention them if you want to. Sure, yeah, I'm all done. <laughs> yeah, I'm, all, okay. I'm tapped out too. So, okay, well, I did want to throw out there um, another uh, manga series in the Gundam uh, franchise called uh, Mobile Suit Gundam: A Cold to Seal. I think I mentioned that one uh, on the show once before. It's basically Gunbuster set in the Gundam universe where we have a bunch of cadets learning how to use Gundams and then it spirals out of control from there. 
and it's great. And, and uh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of other Macross offshoots that are, are also fun to check out. And, uh, yeah, it's hard, uh, it's hard to avoid the Gundams because there is so many offshoots of Gundam. Mm hmm. And, and like, I want to recommend a bunch of, of the Pat Labor stuff because yeah. there was, there was a bunch of, of offshoot stuff from that main, like, TV series had, like, two or three movies and an OVA. Like, uh, I haven't seen all of them, which is why I, I didn't get around to recommending them, but uh, definitely an honorable mention there. Uh, so. Did you get the uh, box set that came out? I did. I got that whole big uh, Blu-ray that, box set. That's pretty awesome. And I've been slowly making my way through it. Yeah, if I, if I had a Blu-ray player still, I would have probably picked that up. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm uh, no more longer collecting uh, media in in solid mm-hmm. form. <laughs> <'Cause>, really? <laughs> oh, no. I, I had too much. I have so many old DVDs and box sets and stuff. It's like, I'm done. So I'll watch them streaming when I can. Mm-hmm. But a lot of that stuff you and can't then, anywhere, really. No. it's so, Some of it is... is Gone by the wayside, and no one really knows who owns what yeah. licensing wise. You have to go the uh, illegal routes, which are always a pain yeah. in the ass. Which, which we don't know, we don't necessarily recommend I or do. endorse, but <laughs> some some of us do, I guess. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Other other ones uh, we've talked a bit about on the show before. O eight the mess team is always great. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Uh, Gundam Unicorn is great. Double O, oh, Double O eighty. War in a Pocket is a fun little short uh, that takes place in the universe. And, uh, yeah, that that's, I mean, there are, are a whole mess of offshoots for all sorts of shows and video games out there. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and tabletop games, too. I'm really glad we got a uh, tabletop. Yeah, I was trying uh, to think of one, game. but I'm, yeah, I'm glad Pat thought of that one. That's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any any spin-off series that are either obscure or just ones that you really like, feel free to to leave some comments on our our Facebook page. It's always great to hear uh from our 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 fantastic community and see what you guys are are into and enjoy and and want to share with each other. So that's what this is all about. Faux show. Mhm. So with that, I think we'll we'll head into our Xville for the evening. Let's exfil out of here. All right, welcome to the exfil as we wrap up the the episode for the evening. So thank you all for checking out uh, the episode, everybody. And yeah, I can't believe it's September we're, we're, already. It's it's September already. This year is just flying by. That summer went quick. We're a fourth of the way through season two. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, even the season's gone quick. <laughs> so uh, Pat's next, I think. I am. Do, yep. you, do you have That'll an idea be... what you're going to be talking about? I have no idea. What I'm about. <laughs> <laughs> a little behind the scenes, people. Is it's 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 always hard to think of a uh, mech bay hanger. Uh, I have some stuff. I've been keeping track of uh, ideas. I'm just gonna sit there and pick one. <laughs> One that I feel like is going to be interesting. Probably one that also ties into what we're doing in our lives. No, oh Sure. So nothing to awesome. do with mechs? <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's you guys. Wow. Well, well, if if folks in the audience have any uh, suggestions of, of topics you'd like us to discuss on the air, yeah, feel was, free. To, yeah. <laughs> well, we'll that, a I would think that would be fun. If someone has something they'd like to hear us debate, I think that would be great. Hopefully oh, yeah, we we uh we can BS our way through anything. I think we're experts BSers, so even if you give us something that we have no clue about, we'll we'll find a way to talk about it. Exactly. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, I'd like to actually talk about stuff that isn't Gundam or Robotech or BattleTech. So <laughs> yeah, we can, we can branch. We'd love to branch out from the that main set. Uh, I know part of it is just kind of the, the scope of things that we're we're into is is a bit more of a narrow focus, so anything outside of that box, you're more than welcome to, yeah, to send stuff, our way you know, and, and check out. Suggest some stuff for us to watch or read, because, uh, yeah, we're always looking for some more stuff. I I really want to get into some of, like, I'd love to watch actually Maspita, like the original, and mm. uh, I know, uh, what is it, uh, 
Megazone 23 has just had that Kickstarter happening to get the relaunch oh, yeah. of that. So there's a lot of fun stuff out there. But yeah. Pet Labor, yeah, I gotta watch more of that. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff. It's just not, <laughs> not enough time. Never enough time. So oh, yeah. cool. Well, thanks. Thanks for checking out the episode, everybody. Please give it a like and subscribe. Yeah. Go to <laughs> uh, Discord. Hang out there. We we show off some stuff. Post your uh, builds or whatever in the uh, the section that has all about that. Mm-hmm. I think it's called the what do we call it? I can't remember. The Shadow Dome. Well, that's the general. T- that's the general discussion. Yeah. And the other one where we talk about, or we post stuff is the dropship, just like we do here. If you put your stuff in the dropship, show what you're working on, what you're painting, what you're building, that we'd love to see that. Yeah, that would be awesome. And you can also always post it in Facebook. We get a lot of people posting, uh, a lot of Cav stuff, and, uh, we have people doing custom, uh, uh, Gundam kits, which is really yep. cool mm-hmm. to see. And, uh, if you see any news too, uh, p- post it up on Facebook and we'll talk about it. I, that's why I, I like to do. I, I, I troll through all the other sites and, and post them up mm-hmm. there. So if you're always looking and, uh, yeah, fun times. Very cool. Well, with that, I've been Brian. I've been shopping and I'm no longer Rob. I thought you were still Rob. Oh, yeah, I'm still Rob. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am still uh, Rob. It's just still me. Yeah. It's just late at night. So. On that note, have a good night, everybody. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. This has been Mobile Armor Radio. Join our Facebook group by searching for Mobile Armor Radio. Find us on Twitter at MArmorRadio. Find us on iTunes and visit our website, MobileArmorRadio.Podbean.com. Join us on the first of every month for more mecha discussion.